Hey ladies. What if you could go out and not wear a bra? I am a boob whisperer. I'm a boob whisperer. Boob whisperer. We sell products that every body wants. We are here to support you in more ways than one. We are the No Bra Moms. My customers are super loyal because we get to second base right away. Look at this. They were just taking off their shirt. Hello, your boobs are small. I was a stay-at-home mom before I found direct sales. I wanted to be a mom first and still be able to bring in um, a full-time income. Once you take your bra and shirt off, there's nothing in between you and someone else. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. I've been talking about Nord on this channel for a while and I still love it just as much as I have since day one. With Nord, you can feel secure in everything you do online. But what is it and how does it work? VPN stands for Virtual Private Network and it works by sending your data through encrypted tunnels on its way to and from the internet. Meaning no one can get their hands on your personal information, not even your internet service provider. This is especially important if you travel a lot or you do any kind of work from public Wi-Fi. You definitely don't want strangers being able to get their hands on your data. You can use NordVPN on up to six devices on one account, so you can be sure that all of your internet browsing habits are private, no matter which device you're using. NordVPN offers more than just privacy and security, though. You can also use it to unlock content from all over the world. Is YouTube telling you that you can't watch this Canadian video from your region? With Nord, all you have to do is open the application and connect to a server in Canada with one click. Unlock the world of Netflix by connecting to servers from all over the world and watch any content that's unavailable in your country. If any of this sounds good to you, NordVPN is offering my viewers a special offer. You can go to nordvpn.com slash savannahmarie or use the code savannahmarie at checkout to get a two-year plan plus four free months with a huge discount. Score 73% off, making it only $3.18 per month. And hey, did I mention NordVPN offers a 30-day money-back guarantee? It's risk-free. So give it a try today. Thanks again, NordVPN, for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get into it. I feel like I've been saying this a lot lately, but there truly is an MLM for everything. Introducing Ruby Ribbon, an MLM for bras and shapewear. Not just any shapewear, though. Ruby Ribbon claims that their products will replace your intimate wardrobe with their undeniable comfort, even suggesting that with their best-selling cami, you'll never want to wear a bra ever again. Oh, and also, the distributors call themselves boob whisperers. I mean, you can't make this shit up. Shout out to the recovering Hunbot, she made a deep dive into Ruby Ribbon a year ago. She's an amazing researcher. She always has a unique professional take in her content. And I recommend checking out her Ruby Ribbon content as well. Also, Alonda is just an all-around wonderful person. She covered this company first. She deserves your view as well. Ruby Ribbon was founded in 2011 by Anna Zornosa and Deborah Yuri. Both of these women seem to have stepped away from the company, though. Sorry if you can hear Griffin in the background through any of this. Mom life. Anyway, the inception of Ruby Ribbon does doesn't really have humble beginnings, like we hear many MLMs bragging about. Anna and Deborah both have long histories in founding new startup companies and then moving on to the next. Before Ruby Ribbon, Deborah and Anna both had leading executive roles with media giant Yahoo. Anna was the VP and general manager of Yahoo Personals, according to her LinkedIn profile. During the same time period, Deborah was also a general manager with Yahoo Europe's online dating business. If I had to guess, they probably developed a working relationship relationship with each other between 2005 and 2007 while they were both working for Yahoo. In between this time and Ruby Ribbon's founding, Deborah held down a position as the chief marketing officer of Squarespace, and Anna was a general manager and executive VP of a division of the Cobalt Group, which seems to be some kind of business project management firm. Then in 2011, Ruby Ribbon was born. Deborah seemed to be behind the scenes for the most part, developing the brand, rolling out marketing campaigns, creating the compensation plan, and their business business strategies. She doesn't really make any public appearances, as I couldn't really find any videos about her. She stayed in this role until 2015 before moving on to two new projects that her LinkedIn says she's still active in today. Anna, on the other hand, appeared on the front lines a lot more. She appeared in interviews, in YouTube videos, and proudly declared her role as Ruby Ribbon CEO. One of these interviews in particular, done in 2017, I found to be really gross, and you'll see why. Mostly because this isn't just a fun little Q&A for the Wall Street Journal. This 
is a pitch. She's practically begging people to sign up. Tell us how you sell your products. It is this, the, the way that we sell our product is through women who 100% work for themselves. Um, they may have a special needs child. They may uh, desire fra uh, fractional work for many different reasons. So she immediately uses parents of special needs children as an example of the kind of person they're looking for in a distributor. I shouldn't have to explain why that's so incredibly gross and predatory, especially because that's the only specific example she cites. She's like, oh, our sales force are just ladies with special needs children and, you know, any other reason someone might want to work from their homes. Like, why did she find it necessary to describe her sales force in this way so specifically? I find it really odd. We have women who are making anywhere from $500 a month to over $10,000 a month in living rooms, drinking wine with their girlfriends and giving women wonderful service with a product that they How absolutely love. fun, and so sales are growing? Sales are growing, but I gotta tell you, we need some more representatives. <laughs> <laughs> so if you wanna, you wanna sell some cami. That's right. Did you hear that income claim though? That's setting a pretty high bar. If it was just as easy as you can make $10,000 a month just sitting in your living room drinking wine with your girlfriends, then I don't think you'd have to be begging for distributors like this. You know, uh, for shapewear, returns in retail uh, can be up to 40%. Our returns are less than 6%. That's the difference between having someone who cares about you, making sure that you're in products, giving you some education, and making and meeting you. I wanted to point this out in particular. She says the reason why Ruby Ribbon's return rate is so low is because people in retail don't care about you, but our independent sales force does. It couldn't possibly be because your return policy is so bad. Shall we have a look? According to Ruby Ribbon's website, it costs $6.95 to process returns or exchanges with Ruby Ribbon. And that only applies to packages weighing less than one pound. So God forbid you bought multiple overpriced items that you ended up thinking weren't worth what you spent for them. So now you're looking into spending even more just to get your money back and you're not even getting it all back in the first place. At that point, most people would just kind of learn to live with what they purchased and cut their losses. In retail, they're not charging you $7 to return stuff. I mean, they're not charging you anything. Based on this interview alone, you can see the manipulation starting to burst through the seams because she's leaving out very important information regarding why their return rate is what it is. Anyway, during her time as CEO, Anna made a lot of appearances in news articles and interviews where she talked so passionately about empowering women, preached the value of confidence, and battled the wage inequality between men and women in the corporate world. It sounds like commendable work, but if you've been in the anti-MLM world for a while, you may have raised an eyebrow at the idea of someone running an MLM and speaking passionately about empowering women, when in fact, MLMs have the opposite effect. On its surface to anyone who doesn't know any better, multi-level marketing sounds like the key to equalizing women in the workforce. Be your own boss own your own business, set your own hours, retire your husband by unlocking your unlimited earning potential. It all sounds great and empowering and also too good to be true. Well, yeah, the fact of the matter is, is that a majority of people who join an MLM will not make any money and many will even end up losing money. The ones who do make money have only done so by further oppressing women by preying on factors that many of us women share, a desire to be home with our children, wanting to contribute to the household funds while also maintaining your home a longing to fill your social needs by being in communication with like-minded people, an aspiration to never worry about money ever again, a wish to gain confidence, to make something out of yourself. Those are all things we hear when we're being pitched an MLM by a recruiter. And those things are great, but you are very unlikely to achieve them in an MLM. What is empowering about manipulating a woman to invest in an opportunity by using manipulation tactics and love bombing? Nothing is, and the women who did accomplish that kind of empowerment did so off the losses of other women. And I obviously can admit that there are men in multi-level marketing, but according to the DSA, or the Direct Selling Association, three quarters of people in MLMs are women simply because they're easier targets. Just had a baby? Don't wanna go back to your job, right? Hey, join my team. Is your husband deployed and now you're living in a new neighborhood with no friends? Well, hey, Karen down the street is having her weekly Young Living presentation. There are a lot of of reasons why someone might feel inclined to join an MLM, but most of the time they end up feeling anything but empowering. At the end of it all, most people in MLMs will come out of it having lost previously important relationships, and all of those ladies that they met through the company that they thought were their friends have suddenly, oh, I don't know, blocked you, or maybe they're harassing you for leaving the company. So you're now a suppressive person to them. Your bank account probably looks worse than it did before you joined too. This is an unfortunate reality. So for someone who liked to run around preaching about empowering women by selling 
selling her shapewear, why would Anna leave her spot as CEO? She left at the end of 2019. According to her LinkedIn, she is on the board of advisors for a company called Baby Quip, which is absolutely wild to me in and of itself. It's literally a company that has people sign up to clean people's baby gear, like strollers and car seats and stuff. It costs $200 to sign up and you keep a percentage of the services you provide. Like it literally sounds like an MLM for cleaning baby stuff, except from what I can tell, there's no recruiting involved. Apparently it was also on Shark Tank. I don't know. But you give them money to learn to clean car seats and that's it. It's so odd. So anyway, she's involved with that as well as being an advisor for a company called Astia. Astia? I don't know. But it's a company that has something to do with inclusivity in the workplace, which sounds cool. She's also the CEO of Nest Collaborative, which is a network of lactation specialists who conduct online video calls to help women reach their breastfeeding goals, which as a currently breastfeeding mother myself, I feel that it's a really important mission for a company to have. So like Anna clearly has this passion towards women and also startup businesses. So why would she start an MLM that further oppresses them? And then here's the kicker. Why would she leave the company and put a man as CEO in her place? Yup. Ruby Ribbon CEO as of 2020 is Clint McKinley. McKinley? I don't know. He has a long list of involvement in multi-level marketing companies. He was the national director for Rodan and Fields in 2011, the VP in field development for Shackley, a wellness MLM in 2014, and the VP of Worldwide Sales and Executive Committee member of Jaffra Cosmetics International, a makeup MLM in 2017, before finally landing his CEO role with Ruby Ribbon. Yeah, this guy knows MLM. MLMs. Did I mention he's a guy? Come on, Anna. You mean to tell me there wasn't a single qualified woman candidate who could take your place when you left? After all of the preaching you do for empowering women in the workforce, you couldn't find a single woman to take your spot? Apparently the board of directors for Ruby Ribbon is all women. Not anyone from there was worthy or willing. It just rubs me the wrong way, considering what the company was supposedly built upon in the first place. Let's get into the opportunity. The website describes becoming a stylist just as any other MLM does. Set your own schedule, training resources, product discounts, all that. And yeah, they're technically called stylists, but they've come up with their own name for themselves. Like I mentioned earlier, they call themselves boob whisperers. And I wish I was joking, but alas, I am not. So out of respect for their hardworking team of stylists, I will refer to them as they wish to be called boob whisperers. And like every MLM, they say you can make as much money as you want to. I hate this so much. I don't get why this is a selling point because like, of course, everyone wants to make as much money as possible. MLM recruiters all make us feel that way by showing off their fabulous lifestyles and saying, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And if we all joined an MLM and controlled the amount of money we make from it, we'd all be flying rocket ships around with Jeff Bezos because that would be cool, but it's simply not true. As a matter of fact, Ruby Ribbon has an income disclosure statement, so let's see how much boob whisperers actually make. First of all, you'll notice that the fine print at the bottom says Ruby Ribbon does not guarantee that stylists will generate any income. But wait a minute, in every opportunity pitch I've seen up until this point, you've told me that I can control what I earn. I certainly don't want to make nothing. This is a perfect example of the expectations that MLM set for you when they're pitching you the opportunity and the reality of how these companies really operate. Turns out you aren't actually in control of the money you make. As a matter of fact, most of the odds are stacked up against you. Listen, this income disclosure statement is a bunch of baloney. The top says percentage of paid stylists, so this chart doesn't even include the stylists who did not earn anything or did not make a single sale. I'd presume that there are a good amount of people who fall into this category, but they conveniently left them out. Then they have no problem telling us what the top distributor in each rank made, but they leave out the smallest earner. They give us an average for the top 25% and bottom 25%, and then they average everyone at that rank. No median, which I personally believe is the most telling statistic you can provide on an income disclosure statement. As I'm sure you've already noticed, the lowest rank of the entire company makes up 94.3% of the entire paid organization. If you include the people who didn't make any money, that number would certainly be higher. This is pretty bad in MLM terms. Usually we'll see the bottom rank making up maybe 80%. I feel like more often or not, we see this number fall under 90%, but here it's over 94. The highest paid distributor in the company made $177,600 in 2020, which again, in MLM terms is pretty low. Listen, if you have found your way to 
this video because you want to know if you should join Ruby Ribbon or not. Uh, first of all, don't. Please consider another side hustle that does not involve joining an MLM. But if you really have your heart set on going against my advice, there are better compensation plans out there, trust me. I mean, none of them are particularly good anyway or ethical in any way at all. But I have seen examples of MLM distributors making literally millions with other companies. Please know that it's extremely unlikely that you'll be one of those earners no matter where you go. But yeah, this ain't it, sis. Try to monetize a hobby or a passion you already have. Start an Etsy store. Start your own small business. Do anything but join an MLM. <laughs> you'll most likely be more successful that way and you'll get to hold on to your dignity. Moving over to their compensation plan or career plan as they call it, it's surprisingly short and sweet and to the point. Well, kind of anyway. Earning income with Ruby Ribbon is based on three income producing activities, which I'm confused about. You can obviously make money by selling the product, but it also says you can earn through sponsoring and activating new stylists. What the hell is the difference between those two things? I'm wondering if maybe sponsoring refers to like team building? They mention a mentoring bonus, so that might be where the money comes from. And then activating new stylists, aka recruiting. Oh, but no, you don't make money from recruiting in an MLM, right? This seems to be the first order bonus, which is paid on commissionable volume from the new stylist's first order. This is concerning to me because it's further incentive for a recruiter to manipulate a new recruit into buying as much as possible because they're going to make 25% of whatever they buy as opposed to the 3 to 5% they make afterwards. Usually this kind of manipulation comes in the form of how serious are you about starting this business? The more you buy, the more serious you are. I mean, we see it all the time. It looks like despite your rank, you can earn between 20 to 40% commission on all of your personal sales, but this is dependent on how much you sell in a calendar month. Long story short, most people will probably fall into the bronze level where you earn 20% on personal sales and you don't move up to the next level until you sell at least 1500 worth of product. You can't get up to that 40% commission unless you make 5,000 in sales a month, which listen, honey, you're going to be throwing a lot of at-home parties to make that happen. Ruby Ribbon seems to be heavily marketed that way, meaning this is your standard throw some fun parties. That's a girl's night kind of MLM. And you can't throw a party without investing in some kind of product from Ruby Ribbon. It wouldn't be much of a party if you're just passing a catalog around. You have to let people try things on or at least be able to touch the products and see its quality. It's not even about holding inventory, but it could be. And you know your upline is going to make you feel obligated to hold an inventory if you're really serious about the business. What happens if you buy all that inventory, but you can't sell it? What happens if you can't even book a party? You're going to get yourself into debt this way for sure. And it's very common in MLMs like this if you decide to go that route with it. Oh, and also you have to have at least $300 per month in sales and or purchases to be able to earn any of the team and recruiting bonuses. If you don't meet that minimum requirement, you may feel obligated to make the difference up yourself out of your own pocket. This is where we see a lot of people slowly going into debt month after month. So yeah, that girl on your Facebook might be posting pictures of her $100 bonus check that she got from her MLM last month. But what she didn't tell you is that she had to spend $150 herself to be able to claim that bonus check. It's all part of the facade. It's all part of the lie. It's all part of the manipulation. MLM distributors all like to say that this kind of thing doesn't happen, but it does. We see it all the time. One thing I've noticed about Ruby Ribbon is the price of their products. Listen, this shit better be magical because they're so expensive. Oh my God. I mean, I'm a cheapskate. So the idea of spending this much on these items just makes me want to cry. Before I give you the numbers, I do want to mention that as I research this, there seems to be a sale going on and I don't know how long that sale lasts or even if sales are a regular thing that they do. But either way, most items are not on sale, only a select few. So I don't want to hear any boob whisperers in the comments saying, um, excuse me, but you can get that one for 40% off right now. No, stop it. Go away. Sales aren't forever, usually. And if it is, then why does Ruby Ribbon even bother? Anyway, have you ever wanted to spend 69 nice dollars on one singular cami? What about $95? Well, with Ruby Ribbon, you can. They also offer demiettes, which basically just look like bras, but supposedly with all this extra support. The cheapest demiette you can get will run you about $49 and it's like lace. So it looks like there's little to no support. It's more of a lingerie looking thing. For a more supportive demiette, you can be spending up to $79. Wanna spend $110 on one pair of leggings? No, it's okay. They offer some for as low as $59. You know those sticky bras that you can buy on Amazon for like $5? You can get one of them from Ruby Ribbon for $22. And how about 
about a singular pair of lace panties for $24? I'm sorry, but you cannot convince me to spend $24 on one pair of underwear, let alone 54. Yeah, they have shaping briefs for up to $54. Full body slips will run you anywhere between $50 to $100. They have tops that I guess aren't like shapewear, they're like basic pieces of clothing. They have three of those, they run for $50 each, or you can get a sports tank that will run you between $79 and $89. And here's the wildest one to me, they sell face masks, and you can get a pack of five of them for $30 on sale, or $65 regular price. $6 seems reasonable per face mask, but God forbid you pay full price for them. Wanna be more than just a customer? You can become a boob whisperer for as little as $59. It comes with your own replicated website, business supplies, whatever that means, probably like measuring tape and brochures and catalogs and stuff. And then also some lookbooks. That's right, no product comes with this package at all. Or you can spend $189 and get everything I just mentioned, plus a $250 product credit. So you can really build your own starter kit, but it's likely that this purchase is just gonna be one for yourself so you can become familiar with the products. I suppose you could resell whatever you buy, but I don't I don't think it's meant for that. All of this is priced about right for an MLM though. They have to pay all of those commissions, team building, sponsoring bonuses, and incentive trips while also making a profit for themselves too. I'll admit the pictures of products look nice, but not $50 for one pair of underwear nice. I need to mention that on their website, there's a banner for a free cami call every Sunday and Monday night. If you click it during any other time, it says, sorry, this webinar is over. So it doesn't give you like any information at all. Of course, I set a reminder on my phone to get into one of these webinars and when the time finally came I clicked the link and I had to enter all my personal information before joining so I was like mm, nah. it's so annoying yeah here take all of my contact information so you can pester me for the rest of my life about joining needless to say I didn't go through with it mostly because I didn't know if it was gonna be like a one-on-one -on -one call with a distributor or something and let's face it I'm a horrible actor and I have no improvisational skills at all and they would see right through me and that is all I have for you guys now let's thank my patrons and my YouTube members. The list of names I'm about to read off are all of my financial supporters. They get access to things like our private Discord server, early videos, we have a postcard club, all kinds of fun stuff. So if any of that sounds fun to you, you can go to patreon.com slash Savannah Marie, or you can click the button beneath this video to go join my YouTube memberships. They're all the same, so it's just whatever platform you want to join with. And with that, the biggest thank you in the whole wide world goes to Amanda Shannon, Elizabeth Wyatt, Eve Blondo, Nitty Dragon, Leanne, Meredith Nakata, Molly Wasilewski, Quinlan E, Raya Mew, Sandra Micklebus, Turd Ferguson, Alice W, April Limblom, Boris Geller, Katrina Rosmerick, Claire T, Danae Twitchell, Daniel Urena, E. Higgins, Erica Lauderkratic, Jerry Duncan, Heidi Haw, Julia Wheeler, Kelly Creffield, Kim Cartwright, Laura Lynn Martin, Lizzie McQueen, Maddie Darley, Melissa Grote, Rachel McHenry, Samantha Jackson, Stephanie Hill, Tuesday the 13th, Lizzie Lyon, Jay Marie, Tiffany Brust, Auntie Lou, Fallon Lowry, Sabrina Franklin, and Julia Nieberdowski. And to the rest of my wonderful YouTube members and my patrons, thank you so much for being here and being you. And even if you're not a financial supporter of mine, thank you for making it to the end of this video because YouTube loves watch time. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and all that. If you like this kind of deep dive content, I do it as much as I can. It just takes a while to put these kind of videos together. But of course, thank you for subscribing, leaving your comments and your likes. Keep making waves, babes. I'll smell you all later. Mommy Tsunami out.